In today's episode, I'm going to show you how I designed and fabricated the front grille of Mr. Fusion while attempting to utilize a minimal amount of material. The impetus for the grille over the center frame of the independent front suspension was driven by the desire to do something about the boxiness and unartful nature of that first bit of fabrication. Here is a shot of Mr. Fusion at its first what I had in mind for the front end was more artistic than this result, but not having ever designed and constructed an independent double wishbone front suspension, I shoehorned myself into a design which didn't glow in the aesthetic sense. So, just like the designers of manufactured vehicles do, I had to cover up my aesthetically unpleasing yet functional frame with a bit of bodywork which did have that aesthetic flow. And this is the result. I was still broke at this time, having borrowed a fair amount of money to pay for the part and the wages of the crew helped me build Mr. Fusion. Therefore, I needed to create a design which minimized the amount of material while still creating a shape which had complex contours and would meet the standard of being aesthetically pleasing, whatever that means. It's very difficult to define what aesthetically pleasing means utilizing only words. Outside of a few music and photography classes, I was never involved with art academia and haven't been forced to define what's behind an aesthetic set, which is fine. I just knew that something had to be done about that less than optimal front end. The solution to the involuntary necessity of inexpensive fabrication while achieving complex contours was to achieve precision utilizing CAD and water jetting combined with a little bit of tube bending. The water jet parts included both the positives and negatives of the cutout of shape. It's the only time that I've done that, but probably because the financial constraints during this rather grim time were the most severe. The bulk of the definition in this shape consists of 34 identical horizontal flat louvers. They're arrayed vertically into a semi-complex curve I designed utilizing a spline curve in SolidWorks. It's then attached to the rest of the frame. Here's a CAD model of one of the flat louvers. It's 6 one-hundredths of an inch thick, 16 gauge, stainless steel. This group of louvers is laid out for water jet cutting. You could use a water jet or a laser or plasma, it doesn't matter, just as long as you get a nice cut. Note the negative spaces between the louvers. These pieces are called drops, and they're usually thrown away. Since I was broke, instead of throwing them away, I made this and you can see how the drop are arrayed form a virtual complex surface. Not bad, eh? The partial fender was placed behind the nose in order to further develop that shape. Obviously, this method of fabrication could be expanded much further and it could be much more complex by varying the original cutout shape of the louvers and it falls that the shape of the drops will also vary. Here's the two pieces of bodywork before they're sent out for electro polishing. Electro polishing is a real nice way to polish stainless steel. The pieces that are dipped in acid bath and an electric current is run through the tank. And for whatever reason, that process smooths out the surface at the molecular level. It's really helpful for removing oxide discoloration from welds. This photo is of me installing the bodywork. The front suspension box was also sent out for electro polishing and everything here is nice and shiny. Of course, we weld with the TIG process, tungsten and inert gas. There's way more control with TIG. I do have a MIG welder, but we only use it when it's absolutely necessary. The exoskeleton frame on the top and the front is for physical protection. The tubing utilized on the top section is only O3 wall, and it bends rather easily. The exoskeleton tubing is way stronger. I didn't go into the weeds of how I did every little thing on the design and fabrication of this grill because I'm more interested in relaying the general methodology. What I'd like to see is people become more receptive to the idea of using their own imagination and their own creativity to life, their ideas and dreams. I used to be a person who believed that the path to realizing my visions was to make ever more money so that I could buy things to fulfill them. What I envisioned was, however, perpetually bigger than my bank account, so at some point I came to the conclusion that I should build things rather than try to buy them. But that's a story for another day. No animals were harmed during the creation of this video. However, at least one human suffered permanent brain damage. As always, remember to obey the number one rule. Do not chang it up. Thank you in advance for your cooperation.